entire journalism industry is basically in a free fall. Today, the Los Angeles Times laid off 115 employees. They wiped out their entire DC bureau in an election year. They laid off pretty much all of their sports teams. They killed their entire tech and business section. They laid off breaking news writers, social media editors. The list goes on. But what's I mean, I mean, that's really great. You know, imagine all of that space, the, those massive, humongous open offices. And now you can house migrants in them. You know, there are poor, impoverished, needy people that, that are going through the desert, trying to get into the United States of America to live the dream. And unfortunately, some sanctuary cities are struggling with where to house them. In recent uh, events, they even tried to house them in schools. B but that is great news, Taylor. That, that is amazing news. It means that now you can house them in these offices. Like all of a sudden, there's this huge space that has been emptied in order to allow for the migrants to, to have a place to stay. Because if you have to choose between putting them in a school or putting them in the open office of some journalists, well, at the end of the day, kids have to learn. They have to go to school to learn their LGBTs. But journalists don't have to journalisming, right? Like they, they should stay home and stay safe. I mean, um, it is the winter season after all that the sniffle is going on. Like someone can cough. Uh, most of these journalists do seem to have like some comorbidities. I, I, I did see like some journalists that are incredibly plus sized, right? So, so for them, staying home and staying safe is the best thing that can happen, right? We need to protect our journalists just like they protected us during the pandemic. They, they watched over us with vigilance and, and they made their best to make sure that we are safe. So, so now we need to return the favor. Now it is our time to keep the journalists safe. And, you know, one of the greatest concerns that journalists have, which keeps them awake at night, is the spread of harmful and misinformation, right? And I don't like knowing that journalists can't sleep at night. I mean, this is something that concerns me greatly. So if journalists aren't allowed to write, if they don't have a job, if they, if they can't get close to a keyboard, then they can't spread the misinformation. So the level of total misinformation in the world drops down dramatically the less people express themselves online. So, so this is like, I, I, I can't see any negative aspect of this situation, regardless of how I look at it. What's really dark is this is just the latest in months and months and months of layoffs in the media industry. In fact, tens of thousands of journalists have been laid off in the past year. Major media companies like BuzzFeed News have completely shuttered their news operations. Time Magazine also just laid off a ton of people and oh, Sports Illustrated basically shut down last week. Pretty much the entire digital media ecosystem that myself and a lot of other millennial journalists came up in has been completely hollowed out. You know, this reminds me of seeing a couple of Twitter videos with people from a mining town. And they were absolutely desperate because uh, the Obama administration at the time pushed uh, some really nasty regulations which shut down the mine. So now the entire life, the entire economic life of that town was shut down. Like no one had any jobs, no one had any work. Um, if you wanted to get some employment, the closest job was like at least three hours away with a car, right? Because the town was in the middle of nowhere and it required that mine in order to function. And the people were desperate, right? And luckily they got wisdom from the journalists. The, the journalists came to the aid and, and they were like, learn to code. That, that was their advice. Like you need to learn to code. So, you know, that, that is some sage wisdom. That, that is like some really important information that I would also give to the journalists now. Learn to code, right? I mean, if, if you thought that that information was adequate for people who were out of a job due to the Green New Deal type regulations, then surely you can take some sage advice from the same job. I understand how it's like, you know, to see the legacy you've built, like a mining town, to, to see it crumble. But at the end of the day, it is to save the planet. It is to protect Mother Gaia. I mean, do you know how much carbon uh, one of these uh, journalistic companies are producing? Just look at their servers. You know, they require a lot of electricity. They require a lot of resources. Uh, so, so the less journalistic outlets that we have, the less carbon it is produced, so the better it is for the environment. 
up. And it's not just digital media sites. Local news has been obliterated. The newspaper industry is cratering. Radio is essentially dead aside from NPR, which has been gutted. Meanwhile, hundreds of workers at Condé Nast, the parent company of pretty much every major magazine from GQ to Vogue to The New Yorker to Vanity Fair are on strike because they're also facing impending layoffs. Even mainstream national media outlets owned by billionaires like The Washington Post, where I work, and The Atlantic, where I used to work, have done layoffs. If you're a young journalist today, there's almost no on-ramp to traditional journalism. Even if you do get a job, journalist salaries have been stagnant and even declined. And by the way, we don't make that much to begin with. You know, it is, it is sad that uh, the journalists are suffering like this. Now, uh, the arguments do seem a little bit familiar here. I, I remember people from Texas complaining that uh, due to the mass migration, refugees are taking their jobs and they're lowering the wages. Um, now, I'm not really familiar with the arguments that the journalists made when that happened, um, because most of them were like calling them racist, sexist, bigots, and whatever. But, but there must have been, right? Like, there must have been, like, some cold, calculated, logical reasons on why a person who is working in construction is now worrying about layoffs and the, the reducing wage, and right? So, so, so take that wisdom, Taylor. Like, like dig deep into it, right? Like, like go back at that, because you're a journalist, right? So, so go into the archives and, and, and see the wisdom that journalists gave to the working class from places like Texas and, and how they were worried about their wages going down and, and getting out of a job because migration. And take that wisdom and apply it now to the journalists because they need it desperately, right? Like they're, they're starving. Their souls are starving from some sage advice, right? Because like, again, like, like they help other people. They, they help the working class in their time of need. So now, now it is their turn to be helped. Maybe if you're like a working class person, you can, uh, you know, write some well-articulated thought pieces on, on how journalists should cope with the fact that they're getting replaced by AI. I also uh, find it interesting. Uh, sports magazines are getting close. Oh, Dios mio. Uh, how are we going to find out who's kneeling for what anthem? How, how are we going to find out that there's now like three or four anthems being played rather than one? Uh, how are we going to find out what uh, flags and paraphernalia sports players are wearing and, and what corporations they're supporting if it isn't for the sports magazines? This was long time coming, wasn't it? I mean, uh, the expression, the journalist industry, right? Because it is an industry, unfortunately. It's not just like people reporting on the news anymore. No, like if you want to know what's happening in the world, you go to Twitter and you see the average Joe with a phone, like filming stuff on the street and showing it to you with, with no editorializing, nothing. Like you're considered almost like a grown ass adult, the same way you can buy your own house or make your own mortgage. You can interpret the news. But the journalist industry means that someone else is paying so that you get the news. In, in other words, someone else is paying for your news to be editorialized. And as Taylor put it, right, billionaires like Jeff Bezos are paying money so that you get your info. Do, do you think Jeff Bezos gives a fuck if you're informed or not? Or does Jeff Bezos care about his own PR, ab about his own businesses, about his own projects, and, and he wants you to get the news in such a way that it is advantageous for him? Uh? And also, like, how does the newspapers uh, make money? Do they make money if they print the truth? No, they make money if they do clickbait. If they create outrage, if they create hate clicks, like that, that's what generates revenue. Telling the story as it happened is not that interesting because if it was, then again, like everyone can just go on Twitter and find it. Let me know what you guys think though. And as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.